So this is solutions to MA217 version test three, or test three, and it's the Steve Sawin version. So I'm gonna start with the first question. Here we're going to Einstein's. We're watching 136 people using their laptops, and we find 17 of them had whale stickers. The first question is, what's the population of this situation? So here we look at the question. We wanna test the claim that more than 10% of all college students um, so that's our population, all college students. It does not matter, sorry, where you uh, took the sample, that tells you what your population is. So the variable we are studying, we can um, also get that from the same statement or from uh, where it describes your study the variable, remember that's the question you ask of each individual, so of each college student you ask, do you have a whale sticker on your laptop? So that's a categorical variable, so the parameter is going to be the proportion. And of course you can see that because we're asking about whether there's more than 10% of all college students have whale stickers. So the parameter is the proportion. Of all college students who have whale stickers on their laptops. Now the alternate hypothesis, of course, is that um, we want the Going back to the question, we want to test the claim that more than 10% of all college students have laptops, top stickers. So the alternate hypothesis is that the proportion of all students with laptop stickers, that's the parameter we just looked at, is greater than 0.1. That's the 10% expressed in the problem. Okay. Finally, it asks for to do the computation of the p-value. So the p-value is because we want, because recall the alternate hypothesis is p is greater than 0.1, we're going to use for the p-value 1 minus norm dist. And what goes in the first slot is p hat, which in our case is 17 out of 136. In the second slot, is your test proportion that's given to you by the problem. In our case, it was 0.1. Um, and in the third slot, we put the standard error, which is the square root of 0.1 times 0.9 divided by 136. And in the fourth slot, we put 1. When I type that into Excel, I get uh, 16.6%. Uh, I think the other versions tended to be a smaller number. This is greater than our significance level. So remember, so our p-value is 0.166, and our significance level is 0.05. So this is bigger, so we say that this data is not significant evidence at the 5% level that the alternate hypothesis, more than 10% of all college students have whale stickers on their laptops. Okay, there are three assumptions. Simple random sample. This is not that. Recall, we know how this is taken. It was taken at the Duncan, presumably at Fairfield U. We're only sampling 
Fairfield U students only sample students who go to Duncan between 1 and 2 p.m. Definitely not a simple random sample. Uh, the second assumption is the large population assumption. I'm going to call that met. What do we need? Need more than 20 times 136, which is 2720 college students. And then C is the rule of 15, because it's one sample proportion. The rule of 15, remember, it's not the actual number. It is P0 times N, and 1 minus P0 times N. Um, this is greater than 15, but this first one is not greater than 15, so that's not met. Tricky point that we're using the P0, not P hat. If we use P hat, it would be the actual number, which would be 17, which would meet the assumption. Okay, and now we moved on to some more exploratory questions. If exactly 10% of all college students had whale stickers, what would be the z-score for a proportion of 17 over 136? So we want the actual proportion minus the expected proportion divided by the standard error. So the actual proportion is 17 out of 136. If P were actually 0.1, the sample average sample proportion would be 0.1, and the standard error would be the square root of 0.1 times 0.9 divided by 136. And when I type that into my, calc my Excel, I get 0.972. That is an unsurprising result, given the null hypothesis. That's why we didn't get significant evidence, because 17 out of 136 is unsurprising. Um, again, if exactly 10% of all college students had whale stickers, what would be the chance that a simple random sample of 136 would have 17 or more whale stickers? So the direct way to calculate that is to notice that that's the sampling distribution. So we can use 1 minus norm dist. And as you type that in, you will notice mean is 0.1, standard error is square root of 0.1 times 0.9 over 136 and then comma 1, but you'll notice that that's exactly the probability we got before. That's because we are assuming the null hypothesis. The p-value, assuming the null hypothesis, is the probability of getting data like you got. So you could have noticed that interpretation of the p-value and saved yourself redoing that calculation. Okay, so here, question 2 was a subtle one. Flip a coin 120 times. Um, if there are more heads than tails, I use this data to test the alternate hypothesis p is greater than 0.5 at the 1% significance level. On the other hand, if it comes up t more tails than heads, I'm going to test the claim p is less than 0.5 at the 1% significance level. I ask, if the coin is fair, what's the chance of getting significant evidence? Coin is fair means the null hypothesis is true, right? P equals 0.5. So the, the key first key observation here is that I'm asking about the probability of getting significant evidence if the null hypothesis is true. So of course, that's the significance level. So if I were simply testing for evidence that the coin wasn't fair, when it was, my chance of getting significant evidence would be the significance level, or 1%. Um, and I gave most of the credit for people who got that far, who said 1%. So we know the chance of making a type 1 error in first test 
is the significance level, which is 1%. Also, the chance of making a type 2 error, I'm sorry, a type 1 error in the second test is 1%. And now, here's the key observation, those are disjoint. You will only make a type 1 error in the first case if you have more heads than tails. You'll only make a type 1 error in the second case if you have more tails than heads. So the chance of making a type 1 error in one of those two cases, that is, of getting significant evidence, is 2%. This is the point I made in class, that you, by choosing your alternate hypothesis, the direction, after um, seeing your data, you, uh, you falsely double your significance level. You do it without admitting it. Okay, so here I asked you to describe what was happening in each situation. In the first case, you're taking two poles. So the samples are the poles that are already there. That was sort of a confusing question. Sorry about that, but um, I did not take off for any kind of answer about the samples. The like the samples are pole 1 and pole 2. I didn't take off for anything that you answered here. What's the variable? It's very simple. You just asked, um, do you approve of Obama's handling of the Middle East? So approve, yes or no. That's categorical. So the test we use is two sample proportion because we're comparing the proportion in January and in September. The alternate hypothesis is that the proportion in January is greater than the proportion in September, right? We want to know that it's decreasing. And again, that's a tiny p-value. So this data is significant evidence at the 1% level that approval decreased. Because I write so slowly, I'm see, writing these rather tersely. It doesn't. It's okay to write them tersely, 
better, of course, to write out all the words. Next question four. We take a simple random sample of 72 college educa educated men. Um, we ask them, did you play a college sport or not? Varsity college sport. And then we must have asked them also, how much money are you making now? So we're testing the claim at the 5% significance level that there is a difference in late life income between the two. So we have two samples, college educated men who played a varsity sport and those who didn't. We're asking, is there a difference? So we're going to use the two sample mean and we're going to use the two-tailed is mu1 different from mu2 or I could say mu sport different from mu not and when I enter into the two sample mean I click the not equals button um, and I'm going to use summary statistics because I have the um, average salary, the standard deviation, and the sample size in each case, I find a p-value of 0 0.0958. That's greater than the significance level of 0 0.05. So we conclude that this data is not significant at the 5% level. That there is a difference. A difference in what? A difference in late, late, late life income between varsity athletes and others. So I did not write that all out, but that would be the best way to write it. To find 95% confidence interval, I use the same template with the same information. I check 95% in case that's not what it's already checked at, at and I read the confidence interval, and I conclude the 95% confidence interval for the difference. This is key, because that's the parameter. The, the parameter is the difference in average late life income between athletes and non-athletes is 25,159 plus or minus 29,741. Okay, in each case, different versions of the test, those numbers were different, but always the standard deviation was bigger than the mean, which means that zero was a plausible value, which is consistent with our earlier conclusion that there is no evidence for a difference. Okay, check the assumptions. A, we've got is simple random sample, and it says so. B, large population. We took one simple random sample of 72 college educated men, so we need 20 times 72, 1440 college educated men. It is not right to put, uh, to break it up into two samples and say we need this many varsity athletes and this many non because we took one sample. So this is met. There's plenty of college educated men around. And then C, because it's numerical, we're doing the 0, 15, 40 rule. This is subtle. You break it up into two samples and one of them has 31 in it. Since 31 is less than 40, We need the second sample, I'm sorry, the first sample to be not too skewed. 
We don't know that. Of course, you can look at the histogram template, but the histogram template cannot give you a histogram of this data because we don't have the data. All we know is its mean and standard deviation. The histogram template will look at the data that's in the current two sample mean template, which has nothing to do with your data. So we don't know what the data looks like. We can't. So the assumption is not met because we don't have enough information. Okay. If there really was a difference, that is, if the alternate hypothesis is true, we didn't find significant evidence for that. Not finding significant evidence when the alternate hypothesis is true is a type 2 error. Okay, that was the test. Uh, we covered a small amount of material in depth. Uh, if you had problems with this, the final is going to be pretty similar, right? We're going to have a couple more tests. It's going to cover the whole range of the semester, but an awful lot of what we learned this semester goes into hypothesis testing and confidence intervals um, in various situations. So a lot of the problems will look like these. You want to make sure that you understand what it is you didn't get here. I will see you tomorrow.